Jetta Grand Prix is finally upon us and teams have already brought upgrades and actually a pretty significant amount of them. It's going to be really talking about all the rear wings that are coming here, what the cooling packages are going to look like and what every team is specking for because it's dependent on whether you're going to go with medium downforce, low downforce. We'll have to see what these teams resort to to get the most out of the car in the Jetta Grand Prix. But even the big teams like Red Bull have brought something to enhance their car and hopefully bring more performance. If you guys enjoy these videos, I'd love if you'd subscribe. The comments that I've been getting and the likes and everything on the channel, it's just been tremendous. So thank you so much for the support. If you guys like the video, I know I'm doing a good job. So thank you so much for supporting. Let's get into the upgrades that have been brought to the Jetta Grand Prix. With all these videos, I start off with the rear wings because I think that's kind of where the optimization usually goes for in these Grand Prix. We got Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren, and Mercedes. So our top four in one picture. Now, as you look, Red Bull has a different wing. We're gonna go over these wings separately with better pictures later, but just comparing the four, seeing what each team has brought. Red Bull has gone with a medium to low downforce, Pretty low for Red Bull. They didn't bring any rear wings pretty much last year. They had two. Two rear wings in the whole season. One was a Monza spec, one was a Monaco spec, and they had an in-between one, but that's it. Most of the other teams brought a different rear wing every like third race. Red Bull was a step ahead of the game last year. Ferrari have brought another rear wing as well. Now the one that you see in this image isn't the one I think they're going to use. I'll talk about that later. There's two different rear wings that Ferrari have brought here. And that's what I meant with the whole medium to low down four specs. What will teams bring here? McLaren have brought another rear wing as well. We're going to look at that one in depth as well, because it's a lot different to what it was in the Bahrain Grand Prix. Right now, the one you're looking at, you can't really see those little finer details. They've added a couple additions that bring up a little bit of upwash in a unique way. And the Mercedes has also brought one. Even in this picture, you can see that little middle cutout that they've done, just like the Red Bull car, which actually doesn't have it to this degree on this picture. Another four teams, we got Alpine, Aston Martin, Williams, and the Racing Bulls car. Each team has brought something different. Alpine seems to have the same rear wing here. I think they'll bring something different. They haven't shown it off yet. Aston Martin, different rear wing. As you can see, the little pointers out, a little bit of more outwash on the cutout on the side. They've also brought a bigger cutout on the rear wing end plates. Also, a little bit more of a cutout in the middle. The Williams, Pretty much the same they usually use but it is a little bit of a lower downforce spec to their usual and the racing bulls has gone with a low downforce spec three out of the four wings here are medium to low and then racing bulls has it at a low last two wings is on the sauber and the haas for the sauber it's a medium to low and the haas is medium to low which is pretty much the trend going on over here with this new low downforce red bull wing when we compare the two from bahrain to jetta you can see the differences, how they've lifted the wing in certain positions, mainly towards that rear end play. You can tell that they've kind of made a difference and the cutout is a bit more significant on this low downforce wing. And as you can see, the geometry shaped into it is different as well. Not as much of a spoon to give it that medium downforce in the usual wings that they've been running. The medium downforce wing, as I said, has been their typical thing. So it's pretty unique that even they thought they needed more top speed here with this new RB20 concept car. Now Mercedes is a unique one because we haven't seen this solution on the car just yet. Look at that middle cutout. It's pretty significant. The actual rear wing on the bottom is also shaped out differently to what it is before. It's great here that we get a picture of it from the rear view as well. As you can see, they haven't really been running this trend that Red Bull started in the beginning of the year, last year pretty much, and I think they even ran it in 2022. So now they're starting to put into it a lot more pressure being forced on the middle of the wing and hoping the air comes out that way as well. It hopefully contributes to a better flow when the DRS is not open to have a faster car. But every team through updates and working from Grand Prix to Grand Prix is trying to make the DRS effectiveness even more efficient than it was in the last Grand Prix. So this is something that every team is going to look into. Another view that you can see of this rear wing, it's the corner of the rear wing. You can see that that's actually shaped differently to what they had before. This Mercedes rear wing is a lot different to the rest of the grid. It's something that I did not think was going to be a significant change for them this early in the season. They've gone with pretty much the lowest downforce rear wing. Some people are saying it's a different spec'd out Monza rear wing. I'll put a side by side just to see because it does have a lot of similarities in its look and it is very low downforce. 
So they were putting a lot of their efforts in the car actually being significantly downforce, maybe towards the middle of the platform in the front wing holding most of the downforce. Because this is a front ended track, I guess they're not relying as much on the rear wing to hold the downforce, but to be able to go into a straight line a lot faster and catch cars. This car is a lot more stable. I really hope this brings a lot more performance like they are suggesting. As I said, the Aston Martin has brought another rear wing. Let's compare it with the Bahrain one. Looking at the Bahrain one, pretty simple, medium downforce. You do see more of a spoon in this Jetta rear wing, but you can see the little cutouts they've made to have certain outwash and also the air go more towards the middle. They've already had that middle cutout and this rear wing is pretty similar to that of the Red Bull last year especially with those rear corners that are cut out in that specific shape. But also the rear wing end plate, the cutout is more significant. It's really hard to tell from this picture, but you can actually see it a lot better in this pic. It's much more profound and you can see how much they've actually cut it out. This is similar to what they brought in Abu Dhabi. I guess the correlation they made in Abu Dhabi from its 23 car to the 24 car has found it to be an improvement on top speed. They were pretty slow in Abu Dhabi, but this is a new car. And I did see people saying in my comments that they're a lot faster in the speed traps. They're faster, but we'll have to see on a low downforce track like this where they actually compete. They had some times that were good. Stroll had a different setup than I think Fernando did. Stroll was faster in sector one, but then Fernando was better in sector two. So I'm really interested to see where this car actually kind of provides that better speed that they've been talking about. I do think it's there, but it's gonna take a little bit to find the right setup for the Aston Martin car. The state car also brought something. They brought a different DRS activation plate and the details on it are a little bit finer than it was before. It's really not that big of an upgrade just to promote better airflow going towards the car. You can tell here also on this car, there's not really a middle cutout here and it's not as shaped, I guess, as the bigger teams. Another thing that Aston Martin did bring here and they showed it off actually in their shakedown that the engine cover was changeable. They changed the engine cover yet again. That actual slope towards the bottom of the car isn't as significant and there is no shark fin on this car. So along with the rear wing, they've brought a different engine cover and yet again, pretty much no cooling on this car. So they are a team that has no cooling gills on the side of it. Maybe they'll bring something for like Mexico, I guess the shape of the side pods is bringing a lot of air in and the air going under the side pod is significant enough for them to not have no cooling and get enough downforce. We'll have to see. So here's a better look actually at the McLaren car. As you can see, there's two of these finer details. They've kind of caved in rather than cutting out that middle part, just a slight cut out on the top, but they've caved in enough of that rear wing in the middle to give it more upwash and the bottom has a little bit of a bump in it to push the upwash even more in this car. Now this is an interesting solution that I have yet to see on any other car and I wonder how much it's going to bring for them. They're a team that I think is going to struggle here with top speed. It's going to be very important that they nail that top speed because I think they're going to be really strong in sector one. So a rear wing here for them that's upgraded is really important for their pace. And also here this great picture by Scuderia Brandon. You can actually see option one and option two and option two is what I think Ferrari are going to run on their car. Option two is going to be somewhat similar to the rear wing that is coming here and how they're going to go with that shape out in the middle and a couple of the cutouts on the rear wing end plates to make it a more lower downforce spec. They usually run a low downforce spec anyways with their Ferrari cars, but you can also see the different solutions they have with the beam wing. As I said, I think option two is kind of what they're going to go for and what I think is the better solution for the Ferrari car to have that downforce, but also the straight line speed. And that does it for the upgrades in Jetta. I hope we get a lot more throughout the year and I hope you guys are keeping up with the channel. Hopefully it's a lot more entertaining of a race and you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world and peace.